and welcome everybody to uh, our annual dojo at FOSDEM. We've been doing this for about 10 years, but this is of course the first time that we've done this online and we really appreciate you all coming to join us. I see that there are 76 people here, so welcome. That's uh, about as many as we typically have in Brussels. Uh, we're having a little bit of technical difficulty right now. And so we only have a few of our board members here on stage and hopefully as the event progresses, we'll add some more people. Um, and I will, as soon as I'm done talking, I will go uh, try and figure that aspect of it out. A um, Couple things to, to mention before we start. Uh, an additional welcome to those of you who are there watching this after the fact on YouTube. Those of you that are here, you should be aware that we're recording this. It will be on our YouTube channel, hopefully by Monday, maybe even before. Um, if you are discussing this on social media, we ask that you use the Centos Dojo hashtag so that I can find and amplify those messages after the fact. And um, we have intentionally left a gap between each of the sessions in today's schedule so that you all can attend the hallway track. And there was a lively discussion in the hallway track this morning. We encourage you to join that for questions and answers between sessions. But right now, we will be having the uh, board of directors answer all of your questions about the CentOS project, CentOS Stream, CentOS Linux, and anything else that comes to mind. I'm gonna allow these people to introduce themselves and um, Let's go ahead and do that. Oh, I suppose I should introduce myself. My name is Rich Bowen. I am the community manager for the CentOS project, which means that I'm responsible for events and social media and promotion of all types. Um, I'm also the person that you can come to if you have any questions or concerns about how the community is operating. And I will help to solve those problems and connect you with the right people. And uh, then let's move on to the rest of our introductions. Bex. Hi, I'm Bex, Brian Exobeard. I am the Red Hat liaison to the CentOS project board, which means I am the only board member who speaks on behalf of an entity because I represent Red Hat's voice uh, to the project. Uh, and so I often don't say a lot other than when Red Hat has a specific opinion because my personal views are not shared as a board member. I work for Red Hat in RHEL product management, specifically as the community business owner, which is why I have this role, because my focus is on RHEL's relationship to its upstream communities, both sponsored and other projects. Uh, next, uh, Tomas. Hey, I'm Tomas Solve. I joined the board uh, last uh, May. I think if I recall correctly, uh, I was contributing to CentOS uh, uh, in the infrastructure quite a lot with uh, Fabian and other people. Uh, I'm working at CERN. Uh, I was uh, used to work for IT. Now I'm working for the accelerator sectors where we have uh, other challenges. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I welcome any question and I hope I can help you. Uh, I'll uh, announce folks for you, Rich, so that you can try and get the other board members in and focus on that. Hey, Johnny, Thank can you, you go next? Sure. Uh, my name is Johnny Hughes. Uh, I've been part of uh, the CentOS project since 2004. And I basically do most of the releases that happen, do the signatures, push, you know, build the, the repos, push the repos out. And I do that for everything except CentOS Stream. Uh, uniquely, I'm the only one that does that for the other versions. And with CentOS Stream, I do that along with uh, two other people, Brian Stinson and uh, Carl George. Pat? Hi, I'm Pat Rehecki. Uh, my day job is at uh, Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory. But as Bex mentioned, I don't speak on behalf of Fermi Research Alliance, Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory, the Department of Energy, the US government, or really anybody. So if it sounds like I'm representing them, it's because I'm misspeaking. Uh, ultimately, I've been uh, in the Linux community since uh, probably about 1999, actually. Uh, been doing this for a while now. 
uh, passionate about open source, love free software. Ultimately, I've been working in the uh, rebuild community space since uh, 2011, uh, primarily on scientific Linux, but I've been working with the CentOS folks for years now on various rebuild things and trying to make the rebuilds themselves more reproducible. Very cool. I know that we are joined by chat, uh, currently by Karsten Wade and Jim Perrin. Uh, and Mike McLean may be there. I actually can't see a list of people. I don't know how to do that on this interface. Um, maybe that's for good. I don't know. Uh, but uh, we are taking questions. Uh, we don't have any formal agenda or presentation that we are going to be making. We're here uh, for the community. So if you have questions, if you wouldn't mind dropping them in the stage chat, and we will uh, take them as they come. I don't know if Rich had any primed questions or not, but uh, we could start by asking uh, Thomas if he knows what kind of a house plant he has behind him. Oh, challenge accepted. I have no clue. <laughs> it's a ficus. I would say it's a ficus, but uh, I'm not 100% well, I mean, sure. Could be a ficus. I don't know. I actually work for Red Hat uh, in the community platform engineering group. So. So we are unsure as to why an event with nine speakers is only allowed to have four. Uh, it is an interesting challenge that we are facing. Uh, for those of you who don't know, there's a big red button and then there's another big red button. And apparently some of us only got one button and some of us got two buttons. And a couple blue ones as well thrown in the mix. Oh yeah, there's apparently blue buttons, but you have to be special to get them. Uh, Johnny, there has been a request if you could sit closer to your microphone or play with one of the many 18,000 variables that you are allowed to change under Linux to cause feedback and, and other fun things, uh, possibly using Pulse Audio. Is it too loud or not loud enough? You are apparently not loud enough, but that's what we know. Uh, there is a question in chat. Does it work better with one or two buttons? It works better with two buttons. Definitely. Two uh, buttons is the way to go. I mean, if we could get three buttons, three buttons is then like my mouse where I can middle click to paste. How about now? You sound great, Johnny. Okay. Yeah. Are there plans to make the board of uh, directors meetings available for observers. Uh, yes, there are plans. We are making very slow steps to move uh, to increase the amount of visibility in the board meetings. I'm sorry, I actually shouldn't answer all of the questions. Someone else want to take any more expansion on that? Sorry about that. Yeah, uh, at our last board meeting, we had uh, SIG member, uh, SIG uh, chairs uh, in attendance as the sort of first step as we begin to open these things up more. And so they were present. Uh, they've been invited to future board meetings uh, because they're largely volunteers. Their attendance is not mandatory because that's not fair to them. But ultimately, we are working towards making them more open and more visible. Uh, part of that process is us kind of figuring out the technology bits and making sure that we learn to say things that are recordable, as, as you've probably noticed in the chat. We're uh, fun people, and we tell jokes, and when those jokes get taken out of context, it's very confusing for people. Yeah, so just to add on that, uh, we have a plan to try to get some video for the next one. We don't plan to publish it uh, live, but uh, we'll try to, as a first time, to record it and to see how we can try to make it available, at least the section we can. That's it. The next question is, uh, can anyone speak to what uh, agenda and priorities the, the board has for the CentOS project? David, I've restated your question slightly. I hope it's okay. Well, I mean, uh, I, I can say that our priority is to uh, uh, continue 
with with uh, CentOS 7 until the end of life um, and continue with CentOS 8 as well as doing CentOS Stream. Um, CentOS Stream is the new thing. It's the thing that we want, you know, for people to uh, become involved in. And, and, and me personally, I'm very excited about that because it gives, it finally gives the community an actual chance to interact uh, with the CentOS project to get things done, right? I mean, before we were just building stuff as it came out, it didn't, re it didn't require any interaction other than for you guys to tell us, hey, we use your, we use your thing. And, and if there was a bug, maybe you could interact. But now, um, with, with the, uh, the REL engineers actually doing work and accepting uh, communications and patch inputs when, when that gets turned on, um, we actually have a capability for the community to interact directly and get things in uh, that not only helps CentOS Stream, but helps REL. And uh, we start operating more like a true community in a sense of uh, the way open source should work. So our priority is definitely to keep alive uh, the CentOS project and to inter interact and, and do things with CentOS Stream. Yeah, just to echo what Johnny was saying there, uh, Stream is really exciting for me. Um, Historically, when I wanted to make some changes in the uh, RHEL release, ultimately the plan was, well, I get them into Fedora and kind of hope that they filter down. And that's not a great way for things that I really care about to make it into the release. And if it's a thing that I really want to happen and I'm prepared to put in the work, Stream gives me a place where I can make them happen and I put in the work. And that's a big deal for me. Uh, there are just a couple little nits that I've been fighting with over the years that I want fixed. And historically, I get them into Fedora, and eventually they filter down. But that takes time, and usually a, an entire major release. Stream gives me a place where I can make these changes and get them into place, which is huge for my basic workflows. Uh, we have managed to get another board member through the door. Uh, Carson, do you mind introducing yourself? No, not at all. Let me, uh, and I might be able to kind of answer my part of the question right afterwards too. Um, yeah, it looks like because I guess we we can have five people on stage at a time. So what we'll do is we'll just take turns and rotate. I'll come on and answer for a little while and then give Jim and Mike and someone a turn as well. Um, and if anybody wants to start a straw poll in the chat, feel free. So um, I'm Carson Wade and I am... Uh, I'm just one of the Red Hat directors. Um, I used to do other things. I was a, a, a part of the part of the group and led the team inside of Red Hat originally that put the idea together to join forces with CentOS back in 2013, 2012, 2013 time. And um, I got, I had the honor of bringing in and leading the engineering team for a little while, um, and uh, was the initial uh, Red Hat liaison. But now I get the, the pleasure of just being a regular director and, and trying to do stuff. Um, I think that's. Pretty much it. Um, I work in Red Hat's so open source program office and as a community architect. So I, I generally uh, work on thinking about big uh, meta community stuff. I guess is what it is. Um, and and uh, and should I go ahead and answer? What was the the question was just about what why, why was I excited about Stream? Yeah, uh, uh, so we're discussing just the agenda for the, oh, the, the agenda. board and maybe where Thank people's you. input would be. It, Thank Pat, you. did I didn't mean to over talk you there, Pat. No, that's perfect. Actually, that I don't. Then, then yeah, I don't. Um, uh, you know, I just I concur with whatever you were saying. Sorry. Thanks for letting me intro. You guys can continue with the question. Then. Yeah, if you've got anything not streamed that you're excited about or is a top priority, uh, that is also a very uh, so yeah. Answer. To segue, we've had a new question come in, and I apologize for missing it. Um, the question was, what are some good ways to interact and participate with the project? Well, we always we always need help on the wiki, right? So, uh, the wiki wiki.centos.org is completely maintained by the community. Um, 
some of the developers can also get in there and, and the board members we have access just like the rest of the community to be able to do things um, there's a documentation list on the CentOS uh, mailing list area and you request for permission to get access to the wiki and it's completely community maintained so that's one way that you can definitely help uh, bugs.centos.org is another way that that individual community people can help um, because that's another that's another community platform where, where if you go in and you look at open bugs and, and, and you know how to fix a problem that's a perfect spot to get that to get that info out um, so both of those are, are good ways if you look at any of our release notes it, it actually talks about both of those uh, areas yes. I would also add to that the uh, forums are a great place to uh, answer questions uh, the, the community lives by feedback when people have questions uh, there, there are always more questions than there are people who are ready to answer them so anytime you can find a question that you know an answer to uh, jumping in with that answer is always appreciated and deeply helpful. And maybe one last point is about SIGs because we have special interest group. And uh, I was um, basically helping the new one we approved at last board meeting, which is the hyperscale group. And basically, anybody that wants to participate in SIGs are welcome. Uh, each SIG has their own way of accepting members, and this is discussed uh, within the SIG uh, people, so SIG chair, can, there's different way of uh, contributing and be accepted in the SIG, uh, but contact them if you are willing to, to contribute. Uh, the Hyperscale SIG sounds very exciting and there will be a presentation tomorrow afternoon uh, about it, so stay tuned if you want to know more. And uh, I've been the sponsor for this SIG, so if you have questions around uh, that, I can try to answer them as well. And so I think that I hate to chain answers, but I would just add, I don't think any of the board members explicitly said it. You can also contribute code and tests to like CentOS Stream, which was the whole point of, of, of the Stream project starting was so that you could actually influence uh, that code base. Um, before, Karsten, if you're okay with it, I wanted to bring in the next question because it feels very related. I, I was I was actually was just going to say what you were saying, Bex, which is for the first time ever, you could actually contribute to the distro. And that's the, what's the whole point of all of this. So yes, please go right ahead then. Um, let's move to... Um, uh, Felipe, I hope you're okay with it. I'm going to kind of paraphrase some of your question. Um, he points out that, or, or they point out, I should say, that one of the things with Stream being ahead of RHEL means that there may have been some artifacts of documentation that they used from RHEL in the past to try and understand changes in, in code. And they're curious, like, how are we going to you know, do release notes or note breaking changes in stream. And I didn't know whether the board could speak to that. It's a very detailed question. So it may be something that the board at a governance level mm -hmm. have, but I'll put it out there. Well, I, I work also in community platform engineering and, and we have one person specifically in CPE whose, whose specific job is documentation for CentOS in general. Um, the answer to that question uh, completely, I don't think we have yet as we're still working on, we're actually still working on the entire process for CentOS Stream from the standpoint of rolling in new new uh, infrastructure and, and doing other things. But there is a specific person and one of the things that we're discussing is, um, the upstream nature of stream and how documentation is going to happen. Um, obviously, Red Hat is going to write documentation for the next version of RHEL, and they're going to release it on release day. Um, so there isn't any reason why we can't take some of that new documentation that they're working on and, and also make that part of what we're doing as part of the stream process in a separate repo. There's a repo for documentation. And so um, I think the plan eventually will be that, that a lot of that work will take place as well in public and people will be able to read some of that stuff. It is, is where I think it's going, but, but none of that stuff has been uh, 
completely firmed up yet. So uh, I'll pull in Phil, Phil's question here as well, again, with slight paraphrase. Uh, but the question is basically, is there plans to merge some of the work that Fedora and CentOS do with bug trackers and other pieces to make contribution easier and, and, and I would use the term less frictionful? Um, and there's been some conversation already mentioned in chat about potentially merging account systems. Um, Fabian has pointed out that they are in fact going to be merged at some point, but does any of the board want to speak to where we may be sharing resources with other projects or changing the resource sets that we use. Well, we already share, we already share uh, infrastructure with um, Fedora. And, and as Fabian said, we, we're moving the, the uh, authentication to sh uh, shared authentication. Uh, we're moving a lot of things uh, a lot of hardware, the, the community platform engineering team takes care of both the, the CentOS hardware and the, the Fedora hardware as well. Um, and so we are moving in, in that direction. Um, uh, of course, we're going to have a GitLab for stream, CentOS stream, right? And uh, bugzilla.reddit.com is going to be the place where you interact with and report bugs. Uh, and you already use that for Fedora. Uh, you'll be using that for CentOS as well, as well as RHEL. So we are actually uh, combining a bunch of things together, including authentication and permissions and uh, making it easier. So Fedora people that, that work on both Fedora and CentOS uh, will have permissions for, in one area. And what, one addition to that is maybe the building system has always been, uh, at least for the community build system, using Koji. So we had close tie with everybody on this side of Fedora as well. And this is something uh, that we put in place. And uh, now we try to expand it so we can support all type of building in the community. And the upstream building system, uh, well, the upstream, the CentOS build system for stream is always based, is also, sorry, based on, on uh, Koji. So this is another point uh, of collaboration that was already happening. Yeah, I will add to that. Th there is sort of a uh, searchable thing that needs to stay in place as we're working our way through these. Uh, the existing Mantis instance for uh, the CentOS bug tracker has a ton of useful community information. And if we were to try and move to a more unified bug reporting platform where we share it with uh, Fedora and RHEL and all of that, we would lose the searchability where our Mantis instance shows up with bugs that we have known solutions to written down. And that's a useful community resource that we don't want to lose. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, people have put a lot of time and effort into getting good answers into those bugs, and we don't want those to disappear. So I, I would only like to echo uh, something Jim wrote in chat. Jim, I hope I don't get this wrong, but uh, merging the actual code repos is something that has been considered, but for a couple of technical and honestly some political reasons, uh, Fedora and CentOS have not chosen to combine their code repos at this time. That doesn't mean it may not happen in the future, but that is not currently in the roadmap for today with the GitLab rollout. Um, if I can, the next question that I would pull out is uh, here which is, uh, I'm concerned about the stability of using stream in production compared to what I used to do now due to the, and I'm going to change the words here, continuously delivered nature of stream. Can you give me a take on why I should or should not be concerned here? So the packages that go into stream have gone through the internal QA before they land in stream. So they should be as safe as when they land in actual RHEL. But most importantly is part of what we're trying to aim for with stream is to increase the amount of internal testing. And so if you've got something that needs a test, uh, we can try and get that into the RPM so that it is self-tested and get it into the upstream code base that the actual software is based on to get more internal testing. Uh, that will not only improve the overall quality of stream, it will improve the quality of the upstream software that we're packaging. And so, uh, if, if you're concerned about testing, I would encourage you to help us build tests to ensure that the software runs beautifully 
not just on stream and not just on RHEL, but for everyone in the open source community. Uh, the more tests that we can get into upstream code bases, the better the quality will be for everyone worldwide who uses it, no matter who your platform is. Um, as Red Hat, I would only add um, two things. The first is that there is uh, CI work that is continuing to be ongoing that will allow people to contribute tests to CI. And so one of the things that would be interesting for you to consider if you're using CentOS Stream is to contribute your tests, whether they become blocking or not, so that you know what's going on with the next release. And that's something that you that can't always do uh, with other uh, code bases. The other piece is that uh, Red Hat engineers are not allowed to commit code to CentOS Stream that is work in progress. It is expected to be finished code. So um, to reiterate what Pat said, we, we're not putting you know things like YOLO, like it has to actually be ready. It has to go through a level of acceptance testing and criteria. Um, I think there was another question. No, that's a bus being thrown at somebody. Okay. Um, there's a question about the change of focus for the project, and there was a question about why we chose to make this change in focus towards stream before all of the workflows were completely finalized. Um, and I was curious if anybody wanted to speak to that. I'd like to take at least a part part of the answer to that, um, because it's something, it, it, and I, I'm um, I'm going to articulate this off the uh, 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 off the cuff, so to speak, uh, which which means I'm just going to kind of you know. I don't have a pat answer for this, but this is something that's been churning my head uh, through this whole process, <laughs> which is that um, you, when it, when it, ultimately when it comes to an open source community, if you want a contribution community, if you want people to be able to come in and make a difference, um, you, you, have to, uh, you have to create opportunities for people to be involved in the decision processes where it's appropriate, right? Um, and, there and there's a lot of different you know meaning behind what that could possibly be, but like sometimes you might inherit say like you know a coding style because that's just the way things have been and so forth, um, and so those, all those all those things like carry down and through. When um, if, if for us to wait to do everything perfect and and roll out decisions to a community for it to be perfect, that's not really creating an opportunity for a contributor base, and it's not. Um, it's not creating the, the possibility for people to get involved and 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 actually make a, a, you know with the distro since uh, since, since the uh, the to solve that kind of problem of being able to go in and get access and do things with the distro. Um, and I guess what I'm, I've been thinking about is this is the difference between uh, the way I'm, uh, uh, this is not product marketing. Um, when a company comes out with a product decision, you expect that they're going to have all of the all of the answers for you and things ready to go or answers on the roadmap about when they're going to appear and so forth. Um, and that's because there, uh, there's a fiduciary responsibility, there's a customer service responsibility, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, on the community side, our responsibility is to open collaboration. And for us to come with perfect solutions um, means that we're not open to collaboration. Uh, unfortunately, it, it means that we have to come with partial, partially done, ready to go things. And, and it's hard to communicate with people, particularly when we're shifting a mindset from um, everything's already done for you to here's your opportunity to help make things better. And, and, and across those gaps, it's a, it's a, it's been a hard thing to describe, but uh, that's just kind of my perspective on why, why we have to come out and do these kinds of not, not, you know, we send toss, but just we as community, open source community people, we have to do everything we can to make as much of the work transparent and happening in, in the open. Uh, and in this case, after, a, you know, after a, a decision has been made for us to, to move forward with doing that, if that makes sense. I'd like to answer that as well. So, um, first of all, the change of focus hasn't happened yet. The change of focus happens in December, okay, uh, of 2021. That's when it goes away. Had had people not told you that in December of, of 2020, and we just waited until everything was in place and then shifted, um, you would have lost a year of planning to be able to decide what you want to do or how you want to do it. Um, CentOS Linux 8 continues on exactly like it is right now for the rest of this year. Uh, CentOS Linux 7 continues exactly like it is until the EOL of, of RHEL 7. Uh, not telling you what the plan was that Red Hat was going to stop funding the, the work, not telling you that a year early lets you shift all your six and seven servers over to eight 
and leaves you with nothing to be able to do. The way they did it now, you can stay at seven, shift to seven, um, look at stream and see if it's going to meet your needs or not meet your needs, find another group. We also gave, uh, there's several other entities out there who are trying to do a, a, a real rebuild right now of eight and beyond. Have we not told them in the community that this was going to happen, uh, they wouldn't be started doing their thing right now. So you have many more options now than you would have had if we waited and, and didn't do it. I mean, yeah, everybody would have loved to for, for CentOS 8 to go until the end of life. Uh, I certainly wanted that. Okay, we would all have loved that, but that's not the reality. So once the reality uh, by the owner of the trademark was was decided how they were going to contribute uh, funding and, and hours to the project. Uh, when they made that decision, they let you know and they let you know right away. That gives you plenty of options that you wouldn't have had if they hadn't done that. And just to sort of be clear, the folks that are interested in doing rail rebuilds to uh, keep aid alive we, we wish them the best uh we, we we love our open source friends uh there was a question raised in chat i think it mostly got answered but i i wondered if one of the board members wanted to give like 15 seconds 30 seconds on the continuously delivered nature of the centos stream code base as opposed to a release mm -hmm. nature delivery like there is in centos Linux. So there's really no difference between CentOS Linux, the way it's done, and the way Stream is done from the standpoint of a release. CentOS Linux, I've been I've been releasing it since 2003, and we've never supported anything. Well, number one, we've never officially supported anything from the standpoint of support, but we've never uh, uh, tested anything that's not the absolute latest version of every single package that as it got released. OK, so if, if, if it was if it was RHEL 6.3 time frame and you were using RHEL 6.1 or CentOS 6.1, uh, there was updates and security issues that that you never got released into that stream. The only thing that was ever uh, uh, tested, the only thing that was ever uh, what was recommended to be used was every single package that's been released up to this point in time. And that's exactly the same thing with stream. Um, all of that stuff is tested in QA before it gets released in two different QAs. It's tested in the, in the current rel process. And then it's also tested in the CentOS process. And we're using the exact same build infrastructure. We're using the exact same QA testing for stream eight that we use for rel eight. I mean, for uh, CentOS Linux 8, it's the exact same infrastructure going through the exact same testing. In fact, streams tested more because, well, it's tested the same because the, the rel team is also doing the same testing on that that they do before they release it. So as, as Bex already said, none of that stuff is a work in progress from the standpoint of we're throwing stuff out there to see if it works. All of the things have been through QA. And, and they've made it through initial QA testing uh, for both the, uh, the rail process and the CentOS process. A question has come in about the change of the end of the EOL for a community deliverable during a release being very unusual. Um, is this something that could theoretically happen in the future from your perspective? I mean, it's hard to predict the future, but fundamentally, Stream needs to sort of meet the needs of our development process. Uh, there needs to be a place where people can push in changes, where people can drive the release towards what they actually are doing in production. 
there hasn't been a great way for people to actually drive the release in the past. And so I wouldn't expect that stream is going anywhere as it's going to be fundamental to the actual delivery process of RHEL itself. Uh, in terms of dates, without having a sort of timetable for where these things are developable, developable, my word, that is not a word. Um, oh boy. That's is it, I think it do. is. No, it's, it's, okay. it's a word. You spoke it. All right, we'll take that. But there, there needs to be a place where people can drive the release. And those dates are sort of critical to actually building it. Uh, if you look at how the dates are structured, uh, they're structured against uh, what was historically called production phase one. It's now called full support, where the release can actually be malleable, where you can push changes into it and actually adjust how it functions. So I wouldn't expect those dates to change because ultimately a stream is the place where you can push the release around. And so as long as those Oh, as long as those releases can be pushed, those dates should be fairly fixed, if that makes any sense at all. I, and, and it does. And I, th and I think that, I, I, I mean, the, the, the difference for me, and this is, because uh, I've been thinking about this problem for a long time, for the last couple of decades, right? And, um, and it, even the, just so looking over at Fedora, people ask the question all the time, oh, is Fedora going to go away or something going to replace it? And on the face of it, anybody who actually understands Fedora understands it's a completely ridiculous question. Like, well, development so relies upon what happens in, in Fedora that, that that's how things go. And, and the idea of changing that is like saying, oh, are you going to burn the entire company to the ground and start from scratch? Well, I don't know. Is that the way we should do it? I mean, so obviously, no, like Fedora is never going to go away. And so um, up until this change, CentOS has always been literally a piece of fruit hanging on this, on on a branch, you know, a delicious, tasty piece of fruit. But CentOS Linux has always been something that was was not essential to the structure of the entire tree. It was a piece of delicious fruit. It could fall off, seeds can plant, things can go on from there. But it wasn't the the origin. Uh, CentOS Stream is the tree. It's a it's a major part of the tree. It's that other end of that Fedora side. So, um, I, I, what I my perspective is, and this is honestly like a big part of why I'm, I, I like all this stuff and I'm excited about it, right? Is that is that we've it, my intention coming into all of this to some degree was to bring the CentOS project in from the cold to bring it into the Red Hat community to the ecosystem to be part of everything, and the first thing we were able to do for a number of years was what's what's been happening, and and when we when we came in in 2014, Red Hat Engineering, Rel Engineering was not ready to make this kind of change, was not ready to open their whole development process to the world to get involved in. The same thing was true of Fedora back in 2003. And when the crew of people uh, at Fedora Core 6 pushed out Core and became Fedora 7 and the whole development system, the build system went external, you know, that was a pretty major switch around it. And it forced a big change in Red Hat Engineering. And in this case, Red Hat Engineering was ahead of us. They had an idea of how they wanted to do a continuous delivery model for RHEL and really needed a project to do that. So what we set up in 2013, 2014 is now culminating in this. And I just feel like all we've done is make it, you know, make the make the future of the project much more solid. And like everyone said, of course, we can't predict the future and so forth. But but uh, it seems to me like what we've really done is brought it's brought a, a real a real thing to life that um, that has been wanting to happen for the last couple of decades. You know, it's like a, from uh, we've turned the puppet into a real boy. Um, I would only add from the Red Hat perspective that one of the things that Red Hat has done several times in the last eight years is to continue. Uh, my two are echoing really, really badly. Um, one of the things that Red Hat has had to do in several years um, is to uh, deal with upstream projects where that community has chosen to stop producing code. Yet we have made commitments to our customers to continue to deliver that code in a version of RHEL for some number of years later. And so we have taken on maintaining that code base in an effort to keep it delivered for our customers in some cases. And so I think that that's just the nature of when you're working with a community project, that project can choose to make a choice um, that may or may not impact your ability to continue to receive code. Um, obviously, that's uh, 
a choice that is unusual and difficult, but uh, I, I think that it, it is a choice that happens. Uh, just to catch up briefly, um, Jim Perrin, also in the chat as a board member, had made a comment that it's very hard to predict the future. Um, I wanted to make sure people saw that. Um, and that giving definitive answers in this kind of a question is hard. And then I did want to pull very briefly, there was a question around the CentOS Linux 7 EOL, um, and it was answered in the chat by a board member, but just to repeat that out loud for those not reading the chat, uh, there is no planned change for the CentOS Linux 7 EOL, and uh, from the perspective of the board today, that is fixed, uh, and that was answered in the chat. Uh, there was also a question that was asked and answered in chat, but I'll repeat it for those in attendance verbally around whether SIGs would be unifying their process of management and membership, just uh, briefly to put it that way. And the answer was no, the SIGs have a lot of freedom to figure out how they choose to organize and define their own structures. Uh, Thomas has put a, a longer question there. Um, there is a, a set of resources that we ask SIGs to use, but <clears throat> beyond that, and I think we may be caught up on questions. I will ask Mike if you're ready on audio, if you don't mind introducing yourself since you've managed to get one of the precious seats on stage. Uh, hi, I'm Mike McLean. Can, uh, hopefully my audio is not too bad. Um, <laughs> wow, I've uh, unfortunately due to technical technical difficulties missed um, most of the conversation this morning, um, but uh, hello, uh, I think probably most of you all met me at a in-person dojo before, and um, I don't know if it was said uh, in terms of, you know, sort of answering uneasiness about stream. But I think the thing for me that um, you know, makes me feel better about it is that, um, you know, the board and Red Hat want Stream to succeed. So if, if we make it terrible, that it will not. So it's, it's, it's on us and on Red Hat to make sure that it, that it is uh, a working solution for people. And that's um, that's where our efforts are going. Given the time, I'll ask if the board members have any closing remarks. Um, I'll actually go first while you think about it, because I had just one brief remark, which is to echo Mike's comment. CentOS Stream is very important to Red Hat, uh, and it represents part of our RHEL development model that we are very, very seriously committed to, the transparency of the RHEL development model. Um, for those of you who do have Red Hat contacts, feel free to ask your Red Hat contacts to have a presentation made to you about CentOS Stream. You'll find that everything that Red Hat is saying in those presentations mirrors what you're hearing here today. Uh, and we can explain where our interests and investments lie and, and why we've chosen to make those, again, if that's of interest. Other board, and again, I only say it this way because I speak on behalf of Red Hat. Uh, Pat, do you have any final comments? Uh I would just sort of echo a lot of our comments around the hope about stream and uh, ask you to think about sort of the big questions of what features are you seeing in Fedora that you really, really want in RHEL? And then say, okay, that's what stream is for. Like you made it into Fedora, it works, and it didn't make it into RHEL. Well, we can fix that now with stream. Um, we can get it in, you just need to help us figure out what that process looks like and what it is that you want to see that didn't make it. The, the big goal here with Stream is to give you a place where you can really drive this in the direction of your workflows. Uh, as lots of people have mentioned on the list, there's an awful lot of people out there running CentOS in various places doing various things. And let me level with you. I have no idea what you're doing. And the best way for us to find that out is for you to help us drive the workflows in the direction of what you're doing to make your lives easier. Johnny, any closing I, remarks? And then I'll turn it over to Rich to, to play us off. Yeah, all I would like to say is with respect to CentOS Stream 8, just try it, okay? The, the way that you know how close it is to CentOS Linux, everybody that's tried it that I've interacted with has said, this is just like CentOS Linux 8. It works the same. Everything is the same, 
except it's not downstream code. It's just slightly upstream code. Try it. It's familiar and it works. So officially we are out of time for this session. Um, I did build in time between sessions. And so if you have more questions, I would encourage you to click on the left. You'll see a button that says sessions and there is a hallway track session. And we can have up to 20 people in there interacting over video and audio. Um, and you're welcome to hang out there all day long or just between sessions. For those of you that have further questions about CentOS Stream, at 1500 UTC, that is in 13 minutes, we have a dedicated session about CentOS Stream that will be hosted by Bex and by Brian Stinson, who is a member of the community platform engineering team that, that works on the infrastructure for CentOS Stream. So thank you all very much for attending. And we look forward to seeing you all day long in sessions, in the chat, and in the, uh, the hallway track. And yeah, that's, that's it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, board members. <laughs>